For any Xbox or PlayStation codes or cheap games on any platform, use the referral link in the description. It'll take you to G2A.com. Use the promo code CHEZ over there and you'll get yourself 3% cash back. For all No Identity merchandise, hats, hoodies and t-shirts, follow the link in the description down below to the No Identity Fan Fiber website. Hey guys, welcome back to the Napoli career mode here on FIFA 17. It's been about 10 days since I last recorded this series. Obviously, in between episode 5 and 6, I've moved house. I'm in the new house. This is the very first FIFA video being recorded in the new place. I'll in due course do a the obligatory new house tour style video. A number of you have been asking for it in the comment section of uh, previous few videos and hit me up on Twitter, etc. So that is in the works. Today, though, we start our life at Napoli outside of the transfer window. In the last episode, we played AC Milan and unfortunately lost our uh, second game of the Serie A season. It was our first defeat, the second game of the Serie A season. We'd previously beaten Pescara by two goals to nil and we ended the transfer window. So today, we'll play Celtic and Bologna and then we'll have a squad report, the first one of the season, so you can see the stats of all of the new players we've brought into the club in more detail. A handful of players have already gone up a rating as well, which is fantastic. So uh, you can see one of the new players there. Christian Pulisic has uh, come in from uh, Borussia Dortmund and will join us here at Napoli, not actually. I might start him away from home against Celtic, thinking about it, considering uh, they're uh, a weaker side, the weakest side in our Champions League group. We have Celtic, Tottenham Hotspur, and Benfica. So uh, what I'm uh, such a busy like I've got nothing because there was an international break for the first two weeks of September, and then six games in the space of the next two weeks. So scheduling is looking like it might be. A bit of an issue here at Napoli this season. We'll have to wait and see how things develop throughout the year. Of course, no Coppa Italia football yet. And that will be thrown into the mix uh, as we head towards the January transfer window. We do have, I think, some money left over. If I cast my mind back, we do. About £15 million available to spend in January. Plus, of course, any more should we decide to sell on uh, any more players. But we'll go into this game against Celtic. We'll play a slight rotation. So maybe a mixture of first team players and reserve players. And we should be strong enough to be able to get the result against Celtic. And then hopefully we can get off to a great winning start in the Champions League group stage. After, of course, having to qualify for the Champions League via the knockouts. Was that this series? Pretty sure that was this series, wasn't it? Against Rosenborg. I will just quickly check. because No, it couldn't have been. Because we, uh, we played... Yeah. We qualified straight away. It must have been the Cambridge series then where we had to qualify. Because I think we finished fourth, didn't we? So it was Rosenborg we played in that series. I apologise. It's been a while since I recorded FIFA. I'm still catching up. I'm still getting myself up to speed with the series as just as much as you guys are. But yes, yeah, Celtic and Bologna today. And uh, then we'll have a squad report and you can see how everybody is growing. So for now... Drop the video a like if you're excited about the return of FIFA videos on the channel. I'm excited to get cracking again. Of course, again, to reiterate, this is the proper Napoli top, but with the saturation used for the green screen in my editing software, it changes colour to a more Chelsea deep blue as opposed to the light blue of uh, the actual shirt that I'm wearing. You've seen it in previous videos with regards uh, no green screen being used, and you can tell that it is the light blue one. I'm wearing that kit on the right-hand side, but unfortunately... The, uh, the software doesn't show that. Anyway, yes, I'm rambling now. Let's jump into this game against Celtic and see how we do. Oh, lovely turn by Armstrong. He's done me there. Thankfully, we can get the tackling with Maximovic and Gulam gets it away. Uh, as I mentioned, I will be slightly rusty, or I expect to be slightly rusty, considering it's been, like I say, about 10 days since I last recorded an episode of any sort of FIFA or even played the game at all in any respect. So... I'm not sure how well we'll do here, but I'd like to do quite well. And Milik gets off to a good start here if the ball drops and what it won't. Svetchenko does well defensively there to get it away. If Allen can recover this, which he's done well, Shalinski unfortunately can't get it under control. And uh, they'll clear their lines there, Celtic. Starting off on the front foot here after 10 minutes or so. But I'm going to have to be wary. But if they can keep making mistakes like that, then it will really do me a favour. Started Dragowski... Uh, Oh, no, it's uh, Drongowski, isn't it? Drongowski in goal uh, instead of Pepe Reina. That was a terrible pass. So uh, we can get him some first-team football. He's only on loan at present, of course, but I would like to perhaps try and get him in permanently next year if he plays well and, you know, gives a good account of himself this season. Drew Smertens will turn his side here and he's done brilliantly well. He got caught from behind there, but the referee decided no foul. I was trying to lay that off there to Zielinski, but 
Not to worry, because he's got it back. But never mind, he kicked it straight at Armstrong. Armstrong, here's Scott Brown. Arguably one of Celtic's best players in game. I don't really, can't say as my SBL knowledge is too high, to be completely honest. So I know of the players, but I don't know whether they're first team or reserve in real life and or how good they are in real life. I just know in rating terms that uh, Scott Brown has been one of Celtic's best players in FIFA for a handful of years. But... They're playing some good football down the right here with James Forrest and Christian Gamboa, but thankfully the cross is straight to Drongowski. So we'll stay at 0 0 for now, 18 minutes in, but chances at both ends, it seems. But Sinclair has been in great form for Celtic in real life this year, I know that much. Bitten has shrugged off the defender there, and I was nervous about the, the pullback, the sweat, but he went for the shot. But just couldn't even hit the target. I mean, with that amount of space there, surely, surely he has to work the goalkeeper. It's just sliced off his foot and gone well wide. That's a warning shot from Celtic. If the other chance earlier on wasn't another. Milik, oh, can't win that header. Sviatchenko is a very tall physical defender, so they're going to do well to outmuscle him with uh, Arkadija Milik. But still, Scott Sinclair causing me problems down this side has to be said in his opening stages and he's still going he's shot actually hit Lee Griffiths that's going to skew towards Jane Forrest and a good block by Goulam Zielinski couldn't get that out of his feet quickly enough to get the uh, clearance away I was trying to find man on the far side James Forrest gets the turn in and Armstrong with a shot over the top of the bar Celtic definitely the best team so far I 100% am quite rusty playing here but hopefully I can get in the groove sooner rather than later and uh, we'll be able to create some chances to try and get ourselves in front. But at the minute, it's Celtic dominance. We definitely do need to improve if we want to get ourselves a result from this one. Is that a foul? This referee doesn't like giving free kicks. Uh, Merton's got caught... Oh, wow, well, that was nicely done. Merton's got caught earlier on on the edge of their box, actually. And the referee decided not to give a free kick. And he's done so again there when that surely was a foul. The man ended up on the floor... But never mind, maybe I can be a little bit more aggressive in my uh, defensive work then. Although I need to actually get near them to even try to be aggressive in my defensive work because they're playing it around me right now. Five minutes to go to a half time, another Celtic chance. Another Celtic chance over the bar, however. Damian with the throw. Hamsik brings it down. Malik is there. Nice turn. Hamsik's gone again, although I may have waited slightly too long with the pass. Colo Torre deals with it, but it, not very convincingly. Can we create an opportunity to take the lead before half-time? I'm going to go back to Damian here. And I'm trying to turn and get the pass off. There we've done. Well, and Alan with the turn. In there looking for Therese Mertens, whose touch is good. Back to Zielinski. Ah, oh, I should have just rolled that in front of me before hitting it rather than trying to hit it from a standing start because I just wasn't going to get the technique on the shot there, unfortunately. He wanted to roll it forward and he just didn't. Got right underneath it and over the bar. Seemingly... We're uh, taking a leaf out of Celtic's book when it comes to shooting on target. Not doing it very well at all. Mertens. Poke that there for Zielinski. She's done well. I'm waiting for runners. That somehow has managed to drop to Arkadija Mili. And I'll play that through. And Zielinski. Yes! That's what I wanted to do with that shot in the first half. But it didn't quite work. Our first shot on target of the game so far... And it flies into the top corner. Napoli 1, Celtic 0. Lovely finish. We got so lucky that it dropped back to Milik there. But that ball back through there was brilliant. Mertens actually tripped over the man. It was actually Tris Mertens I was trying to find. But uh, Piotr Zielinski buries that in the top corner. Superb finish. Nothing the goalkeeper can do about it. Sorry, Craig Gordon. Celtic 0, Napoli 1. It's good football from Celtic. The passing is superb. I can't cope with it. Thankfully, Marek Hamšík has done well to win the ball back there. Milik out to Pulisic. A bit of footwork. We'll look for Marek Hamšík. Hamšík can't squeeze that through to Milik, but Zielinski with a lovely ball, actually, out there to Dries Mertens. Uh, he's gone again, Zielinski, and we'll play him in. Can he return the favour to Milik? We'll look to... And Milik! Oh, that's a great save! He's gotten something on that there, Craig Gordon. That is a great save. Zielinski did try and return the favour there to Milik. We sent good to see a replay. And Milik did get there, as you can see. And the shot was on target. It hit him in the midriff. That's superb goalkeeping. Absolutely brilliant. Gulam, Gulam with the corner. Up goes Maksimovic, but over the bar goes the ball. Oh, I could have sworn we were going to get a 2-0 lead there. It's tackled by Hamsik. Zielinski into Milik. Oh, no. What an interception from Kolo Torre. That surely would have sent Milik in to make it 2-0. 
They've defended very well, it has to be said, Celtic. Other than that one chance that we created to get the goal, they've been pretty difficult to play against, actually. Again, it might just be my rustiness, but still, it's. I'm just glad that we got the 1-0 lead when we did, and we've been able to sit on it so far, although I might be about to fall off at the perch that I was sat on if I keep passing the ball away like that. Armstrong here in the middle. They're not been quite as adventurous in this second half Celtic, which is a surprise because they've been behind for the majority of it. Oh, it's a lovely ball inside to Dembele and they've equalised. Well, they might not have been as adventurous, but they have been able to get the ball into the back of the net. Moussa Dembele comes off the bench for Celtic and scores an equaliser with 14 minutes to go. Very well worked down that right-hand side. The majority of their players come down the left through Scott Sinclair, but you saw... Just all two defenders there drawn out towards the man with the ball. And that left space inside for Dembele to come through into the gap and bury the chance. 1-1. Quickly in there to Rog. Down here to Gulan. I need a runner inside, which I do have. That was meant for Rog, not for Milik. Lustig will clear it away. Rog. In there to Kayahon. Milik is there. I'm going to try and turn on the defender, which we've done well. And it's Allen. He's given a pen. It was Alan that ran onto it. It changed player for me. I was trying to get there with Agadisha Milik, and I couldn't. You see this lovely turn there. I'm trying to get there with Milik, and then it... Uh, it's just a 50-50. I mean, I'll take the penalty. I'm very, very delighted and happy to take the penalty, but I don't think that was a pen at all. Milik to give us a 2-1 lead, and does so. Rather extravagant celebration with a forward roll, but we'll take it. Napoli 2, Celtic 1 with just three and a half minutes to go. I'm pretty sure you will agree with me though, that was quite simply not a penalty. But I don't care, in the 87th minute, we lead again. Zielinski out there to Marco Rog, who I will just run with here, considering he has the stamina and the uh, extra pace. And I look to poke that through there. It was meant for Kajahon. Zielinski will play through Jose Kajahon and he will make it three. Well, Celtic fought bravely, got themselves back on level terms, but the substitutes have been too much for them to handle. The pace of Rog, nice ball across there, quick ball through to Jose, to Jose, to Jose Cajon, actually no, Spanish, Jose Cajon, and a lovely little drilled finish into the bottom corner. We are getting three points from our first game back in the save with a 3-1 scoreline. Absolutely brilliant. After the way that Celtic dominated the first half, I was a little bit nervous that perhaps we weren't going to get anything from this game. And then when they pegged it back with 15 minutes to go, I'd resign myself to a draw. But with the way that we got the penalty and then the ease that we cut them apart there for that third goal, it seems that it was written in the stars that we we're going to get ourselves a win from our first game back. Three goals to one away from home in Scotland. We will travel back to Italy in high spirits and now head to face Bologna. In Serie A, Benfica lose 2-1 to Spurs at home as well. So Tottenham top of the table. As you know, we'll be top of the table on goal difference by three goals to one. Tottenham behind us, then Benfica, then Celtic. A winning start to our Champions League season. Couldn't have asked for more. Let's go and get ourselves another win in Serie A, shall we? Messina cuts inside. Oh, what a through ball into Nagy, who's in the box, and drilled into Pulgar, and I can't, I just couldn't change to the right defender quickly enough. Thankfully, Pepe Reina makes the save. I got so excited, I was spouting myself. I just, I, I kept trying to change to the right man, I just couldn't. I ended up just running away from the ball. Corner for Bologna in the opening three minutes. Nagy, oh, pulls up back to the edge of the box, and if, oh, Castadello... I'm not, I'm not too, too sure if that was his actual name. Could have uh, gotten a better contact on that. That may well have been a stunning opener for Bologna here. Well, we might be up against it in Serie A this season. We got a decent win against Pescara, but AC Milan proved to be a very tough test. And as were Celtic, so it seems, in uh, the uh, game in the Champions League as well. Now, in the RTG, we've had a very nice run of things in multiple competitions in multiple seasons. But... On Legendary in this series, things don't quite seem to be quite so simple for me. Again, could be because I'm rusty, but... Oh, Paul Gar fires wide. But we might genuinely have quite a challenge here at Napoli this season. I'd like to think we can improve quickly, but we'll have to wait and see how things go. 
Riedeveld at the back here for Bologna as well, of course, formerly of Ajax. Not sure whether that's a permanent or a loan move, but he's a very, very good defender with great prospects. So uh, we'll have, be, oh, have a work out to try and get past him and Gastadello. Gastaldello, that's who it was, who had that shot earlier on, cuts out the uh, the through ball. So doing work at both ends of the pitch for Bologna here in the opening 15 minutes. Nil-nil in that opening spell. I'm sick with the tackle. Zielinski will run off with it. Um, I'm not entirely too sure who to go to here. We'll give it to Hamsik. There's plenty of space out here for Dries Mertens, who will turn inside. Well, is that a pen? It is. Dries Mertens is so good on this game. It's well, well, And in real life, evidently, from his performances for Napoli this year. But that's not the first time he's done that to a defender in this save this season. Cutting inside, darting even further into the box and drawing the foul, winning the penalty. Uh, it's Insigne that's on it, but I will give it to Dries Mertens to take himself. I want to try and replicate his goal-scoring form in real life in this save if we can. And... I won't be able to do that if I can't put penalties away. Morante with the save. We scored a penalty in the first game, but we've missed one here in the second. Oh, and Belotti very nearly scored there, and Gulam tries to pull it back across, but no, we're not able to get ourselves in front. Well, I thought we were certainly going to take the lead there, but after 25 minutes, it's still nil-nil. A penalty missed from Dries Mertens. Not good enough for me, it has to be said. Try and poke that through, but... Can't find Marek Hamšík and Bologna will clear their lines yet again. Insigne with a throw. He's like back to him. Ned Hamšík, Bolotti's there. I've got runners and I'm not sure which ones to use, to be honest. Foundry Smertens, there's the turn and a finish. Oh no, and Bolotti sweeps it home. We lead. Dries Mertens heavily involved again. It's a good block. I can't even remember whether it was a save or a block. There were so many people back there. Lovely turn. Was it a save? No, it was a block from the defender. It drops to Bolotti and he just managed to get to the ball in time before the next defender came across there, sweeping it home. We lead at last. We may have missed a penalty, but thanks to new striker signing Bolotti, we have ourselves a 1-0 lead here just before half-time against Bologna. He say. Gonna out there. Well, I was looking for Insigne, but Belotti picks up the loose ball after it got blocked. Diawar is there in plenty of space. Kind of pulling the strings in the midfield at the minute. Dries Mertens gets the ball. Let's try and squeeze that back there to Zielinski, which we've done. I'll lay it off to Dries Mertens, who misses the target quite significantly. Oh, I had the space there to find the target and pick my spot on that left-hand side of the goal. But unfortunately, I may have put a little bit too much power on it. Nice ball through there to Belotti. zielinski has gone for the run again, but... Just didn't feel confident enough being able to find him there. Diora back to Hamshik. We do keep the ball well here in Napoli, it has to be said. Throughout this save. Oh, it's a lovely turn. Blotti for two. Oh, I can't hit the target. Saved my life today, can I? I should have buried that. I re that was a great turn from Blotti. Brilliant turn on the edge of the box to work the space. And then again, I didn't put too much power on that, but clearly I keep doing it too much. Oh, we should be out of sight here. For Bologna we really should be three or four goals up by now but unfortunately it's just the one and whilst it is just the one and as we've seen I have the odd defensive mistake in me we may still only come away with a point here although I would very much like to keep up this level of dominance and eventually get a second goal it's a lovely cross but I can't get there and he's very comfortably knocked that back to his keeper very good defending from Bologna there win that header well up Diawara very good header Belotti will pull that back. Was it actually intended for Diawara? But never mind. We have eventually found him. There's Belotti. Give that to Insigne. Belotti's gone for the run around the corner. And I'll try and cut that back inside to Insigne. Oh, Gastaldello, again the man in the way. He's been very good for Bologna here. He and the goalkeeper. And my lack of ability to shoot on target or keep my shots down is a number of reasons as to why the scoreline still reads as it does. Insigne will turn here, but... Not quite able to get the space I wanted there or the acceleration. Hamsik will look through there to Belotti. You should have the strength to hold off the defender. He's done very, very well. We'll turn inside. Belotti, I have to go solo here. And it very nearly squeezes in. Oh, that would have been such a stunning solo goal. Again, I've forgotten to change. To give all... To give Insigne the corner. But decent header by Hamsik. Unfortunately, straight at the keeper, though. They'll look to come on the counter, but Creighty slowed down there by good defending. And we will look to keep our 1-0 lead intact. Switch this, look for Insigne. Drop the shoulder, that didn't work, but somehow still got possession. Insigne's footwork's just ridiculous. He and Dries Mertens have the most unbelievable dribbling stats. Oh, it's beautifully into Zielinski. 
and blocked, unfortunately, looking to replicate his goal against Celtic, but not quite able to do it. Actually, I'll leave Dries Mertens on the uh, on the corner because he's not really going to win any headers either. It's only corners from the other side, really, that I need to alter. Goulam looked to quickly get this to Jorginho. It's just come on and draws a good save out of Morante. Very nearly able to get ourselves in front. We'll take oh, further in front, should I say. Uh, actually, I've taken Insigne off, I think, for Jose Cojon. So we'll whip this in with Dries Mertens instead. And Cajon could be underneath it. And I think that was Crazy, the defender, or the winger, in fact, that got underneath it to defend it for Bologna. Let's put this towards the near post. Bit of pace on it, bit of whip. And nobody makes the run. Alan threw himself towards it. But well, he's kicked that against his own defender. Win that. Oh, unfortunately, it's not the best headers, but we have got possession back. That would have been rather embarrassing for Bologna to concede a second like that. Poke that around the corner. Cajon does get the turn in and the shot. Morante again with the save. Oh, we really should have scored six or seven in this game. That's flicked on, but it's blocked well by the defender and just plops up kindly into the, into the hands of Morante. I mean, we've, we're definitely back with a bang here we're playing some very good football I've been very pleased with the uh, standard of football I've been playing have to be honest I thought I was gonna be a lot more rusty than this or at least I was in the first half against Celtic but I've seemingly gotten back on the horse quite well and we've been playing some really good football take the corner with Gulam because why not and up goes Koulibaly and that's straight at the keeper five minutes to go somehow this is still only one goal to nil Allen with the throw into Dries Mertens. Cross that towards the back post. Play it back across with Kea Hon, but I can't find a teammate. Just trying to knock that back for someone to run on and just sweep home, but unfortunately not able to do so. But we get the victory nonetheless. That 1-0 uh, lead was enough to see us get victory. We could quite easily have had a hatful of that game. 14 shots, 7 on target, and almost all of those should have gone in, and we missed a penalty. Thrilled, though, to get the three points. Uh, we'll have to wait and see what else happens around the league, but let's jump back and have a squad report. Right then, time for the first squad report of the season, or first in detail squad report of the season. We had a quick look through the squad in uh, episode number one, but there have been there has been some growth in the uh, in the series already, which is great, and we've started the season off very well indeed, despite of course that defeat against AC Milan, which is already a uh, blot on the copybook. But never mind. Uh, Pepe Reina has actually kept five clean seats in eight games so far. Two in three in Serie A. Of course, the one being that 1-0 uh, defeat against uh, AC Milan. And uh, his stats are starting to decline already. Kicking down by two, reactions down by one, and jumping down by one. So I may look to get a new goalkeeper in January. Uh, Curve is down by one as well, but that doesn't really matter for a goalkeeper, does it? His size up one, though, to 80 rated overall already at 22 years of age. Crucially, his physicals are growing too, which is great. Might start to train his technicals as well, but if he's going to grow quite well on his own back, then I might not need to. We'll have to wait and see. Koulibaly, a little bit of growth actually in his technicals, but no growth overall. In fact, probably more on oh, no, that. Probably the heading accuracy of plus three that has just tipped the scales for his side to go up on. But Koulibaly growing well already. Five clean seats in seven for him. Uh, Maximovic is up one. He, as we mentioned, is on loan here from Tur Torino, question mark? Yes, from Torino, but I will probably look to buy him next season if he continues to perform as well as he has been. Uh, playing very well, got one assist as well, in fact, in Serie A, and up one overall to 81 already. Gulam growing already too, but no overall rating improvement for him. Uh, 79 rated still, but still extremely good on that left-hand side. The two wing, two wing backs have been brilliant so far. The way they bomb forward really suits my style of play as well. Uh, Diawara is up one to 77. Very high prospects for him this season. Didn't realise actually it was Bologna he joined us from. So playing against his former club in that last game. Growing across the board, which is great. Marek Hamsik, no decline in his stats, which I think is more important than... Uh, him potentially going up any ratings. But two goals in preseason and an assist. Just the one assist so far in Serie A, but high ratings and a uh, clean sheet in the Champions League as well against Celtic. Zielinski is up 1-80 to 80 rated overall too. A goal and an assist against Celtic to give him a 9.3 rating in that game. Recently arrived from Udinese and uh, up 1 already to 80 rated. You can see there 
his stats have gone up with regards to his short passing and his long passing, which is great for the role that he plays in the team. Lorenzo Insigne already up one to 85 rated, only one assist for him in pre-season. Not really that heavily involved so far in the Serie A games, but a 7.7 .7 rating means that he's clearly doing something right. So uh, sometimes you get a player that doesn't necessarily throw up the stats with regards to goals and assists, but they do play a crucial part in the way that the team plays. And if you replace them, I've noticed this with Ultimate Team, I might have a player that isn't necessarily getting goals or assists, but I take them out of the side to replace them with someone else and the team just doesn't play as well. So he might be playing an integral part in the build-up play whilst not actually getting the goals and assists to go with it. Belotti has two goals in three games for us in Serie A. We, of course, paid £30 million for him and he's come in and already grown up 1-82. to 82. So delighted with his growth. I'm not training him yet either, so I may not need to. A handful of people have actually said don't train him because that could potentially stunt his growth. A few of you have said you've signed Belotti, not trained him, and he's grown off his own back. So we'll leave that for now. Slightly concerned with the fact that Dries Mertens' stats are starting to drop. Thankfully, they're high enough that even if they do start to drop, he's still going to be quality for us. Unbelievable preseason. The one goal so far... In the, in the league. Could have been two had I scored the penalty in that last game against Bologna. So he's definitely having an impact for us. Raul Albiol, his stats actually haven't declined at all. So really pleased with that. May consider selling him in January too. Although if we are going to have to get the goalkeeper in, we might not have enough money to do both. We'll have to wait and see. Jorginho feels threatened at the team right now, but he's up 1-82 to 82 rated. Has played two games. Interest shown in him by Lazio, but I don't want to sell him on. Uh, so uh, we'll try and keep him and maybe improve his morale if we can. Milik is up 1-80 to 80 rated as well. Got the goal in the Champions League, although of course from the penalty spot. But got the assist as well for uh, Zielinski's goal. So he's played well for me so far. Not yet featured in Serie A. But uh, obviously Belotti is playing uh, up top in uh, domestic competitions. Tonelli's up one despite not playing for me at all. So that's a good sign. Maybe we could sell Raul Albiol and put Tonelli in the starting. Well, not in the starting lineup, but he could be our backup. Whereas at present, Albiol is my backup centre back. Allen is also up one despite uh, not well, not playing too much. There's substitute appearances that he's uh, got there, but played very well in the Champions League against Celtic. Uh, Jose Cajon, his sprint speed is down too, so uh, not really too sure what's going to happen with him. I was thinking about moving him on, wasn't I, in uh, either January or next season. We'll keep an eye on that stat uh, decline. Uh, Matteo Damian, very solid for me so far in the games that he's played. Obviously back up at present to Hisai, uh, being similar rating but older, but... He's still very, very good, and we'll see a number of uh, of games this season. Marco Rog up one as well. Pleased that his physicals are starting to grow too, and his technicals are already pretty good at 21 years of age. He is hopefully going to be my Marek Hamsik replacement. Pulisic is growing across the board already, technically as well, which is great, and his physicals are already superb. If only his strength would go up a little bit. A 6.6 .6 rating for him against Celtic. Drongovski is up one already to 72. I'm not training him, so that's superb growth with regards to him already. We may not need to train him, of course, on loan for two years, I think it was. A two-year loan deal, so... He'll hopefully be very, very good for us sooner rather than later. Uh, Johnny is growing well as well. Technically, not actually, no, I am training him, but I don't think in training his stats have gone up yet. So he, the, those stats have gone up without the training that we've been doing with him. So that's great. We obviously brought him in in the uh, window. Vlad Sewer says, a little bit of growth for him. Again, not played for me though, really. So uh, pleased to see that he's growing. Bodes well should he get some first team football. Jacarini starting to decline as we expected he would do. I'll, again, I again will try and sell him in January. Mazio stats starting to decline again. I'll try and sell him in January. And then uh, some players out on loans. Zuniga, no growth for him. No growth for De Guzman. None for Maiello or Dimitru or Nahore or Daisy or Roberto Insigne. Or Zapata, or Grassi, or Lasicki, or Laperto, or Bifu or or Bifulco, or Negro, or Leandrino, or Z oh no no, there's some growth for Zervin. He's at one to uh, fifty five rated. Rather disappointed with the lack of growth from all of my uh, players that are loaned out currently. To be completely honest, but uh, we'll have to wait and see if that improves throughout the course of uh, pre 
the se the first season, not pre-season. Uh, no youth players at present to uh, rant and rave about, but we do have a game in hand on everybody in the league. Should we win said game in hand, we will go up to third on nine points ahead of Roma, which, of course, is the Champions League spot. Three Champions League spots in Serie A. Key to point out, not four, as is the case in the Premier League. And third is only a qualifying round spot. So you, to go straight into the group stage, we're going to need to finish in the top two. Juventus in fourth currently. Milan at the only side with a 100% win ratio so far. Of course, they beat us to get that. So we'll have to wait and see what happens throughout the season. But I'm pleased with how things are going so far. Hopefully you guys are too. I'm pleased to be back making content again. So uh, hopefully you guys are happy to see me making content again. Drop the video a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel too to make sure you don't miss out on any further content. There'll be an RTG video tomorrow. Like I said in the little update video yesterday. Uh, for the next week or so, uh, you'll have one video a day. Because I'm away today as you see this. And Wednesday and Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So uh, I'm not going to get the chance to record for a few days. So I'm trying to record as much in advance as I can. And then hopefully, next this time next week, probably on Tuesday, we'll be back up to two games or two <laughs> two episodes per day, should I say. So uh, drop the video a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel for more. And I will see you tomorrow for the return of the Career Mode RTG.